Hello, my name's Eleanor Bull and I'm a health psychologist in pain management and I work with people coping with many challenges um, surrounding living with long-term pain and I try and help them live life in the best way possible according to what's most important to them. In these videos we're going to talk about the topic of sleep, firstly busting some myths about sleep before um, me sharing some ideas that are tried and tested to help you get a better night's sleep if you're living with long-term pain. The Elizabethan poet Thomas Decker once said, sleep is that golden chain that ties health and our bodies together. It turns out he could be right. Science is just beginning to understand how active the mind and body are during sleep and how important sleep is for our health and well-being. We all like to get a good night's sleep, but for many people it's the last thing on the to-do list after a busy day. Not something to make room for, think about or prioritise. Some people even feel like it's a waste of time. We'll sleep when we're dead. However, we know now that sleep is an important active process in which our brain processes new learning and tidies up our memories. Our body repairs and renews, a bit like a spring clean every night. No wonder then that long-term lack of sleep has been linked to people developing some long-term health problems such as diabetes. Saying that, at any one time, about a third of people in the world will be having problems getting to sleep or staying asleep. And this is much more likely in those living with long-term pain problems. Amongst the many challenges of living with long-term pain, people often report that tiredness and sleep problems are the most um, difficult to live with. One thing we all know is that the more we try to sleep and the more we get wound up and frustrated, the less sleep comes. Also, the body is pretty resilient to sleep problems and can usually cope better than we might fear. So, it's a bit of a balancing act, prioritising and working on our sleep pattern to give ourselves the best chance of a good sleep, whilst not worrying too much when it doesn't all go to plan. Knowing a bit more about how it works can help us feel better about our own sleep pattern and get the balance right. In this first video, I'm going to bust some myths about sleep. In other videos, we'll look at our sleep schedule and some thinking skills to help cope with those nights when sleep just doesn't seem to want to come. Myth one, we should all get seven to eight hours of sleep per night. This is a myth because our need for sleep varies across our lifespan, depends what we're doing in the day and varies from person to person. So there's no such thing actually as a normal amount or target amount of sleep. Seven to eight hours of sleep is the typical amount that most people need, but some people find they're refreshed after just four hours of sleep, whilst a newborn baby would sleep for about 18 hours a day. Gradually, as we get older, we might find we need less sleep and we have a lighter sleep. This is a completely normal change. People find, for instance, that on retirement, their need for sleep can decrease as they're using their brains and bodies in different ways than they might have done when they were working full time, for instance. To learn how much sleep you need on an average night means keeping a record of your sleep over several weeks and also noting down how you feel in a sleep diary. This will be covered in our sleep diary video. Because of the way sleep works, we all experience what are called microarousals, or times when we surface into lighter sleep and way wake up slightly during, during every night. In Shakespeare's time, there was no such thing as a solid eight hours. People used to have a first sleep and a second sleep and do reading, writing letters and chatting with their families by candlelight in the midnight hours in between. This should help us feel a bit more at ease if we're the type of person who doesn't have the typical one solid sleep pattern. That's absolutely okay. Myth two, if we miss out on sleep, we've got to catch it all up. Throughout the night, we go through various cycles of sleep, lasting about 90 minutes each, with lighter and deeper stages of sleep in each. Rather than drifting off and sleeping more and more deeply, like a log as the night goes on, the brain and the body's work that help us feel refreshed tends to happen in the early cycles of sleep. This is why we may sometimes wake up feeling pretty refreshed even if we haven't slept for that long during the night. Also, if we have a bad night's sleep, the body naturally sleeps more deeply in the following nights. 
These resilient systems all helped us survive in the earliest days of human life when we might have had to cope with lots of broken sleep, um, for instance, waking up to fight off nighttime predators. Altogether, these clever body systems mean that we only really need to make up about a third of lost hours um, in sleep. As we'll come to in another video, this can be done at your usual sleep time, so there's usually no need to try and nap during the day to make up um, any sleep debt. Myth 3. Sleeping problems always stick around. Like I said, about a third of the people in the world are having problems with sleep at any one time. That could be a comforting thought when lying awake because it can feel a bit of a lonely experience. Sleep problems can be for all sorts of reasons. For instance, stressful events at work, home, school, money worries or relationship issues can keep us ticking over in our minds. People living with a long-term pain problem report higher levels of sleep problems. Insomnia affects about two-thirds of people with chronic pain at any one time and poor sleep can influence our pain sensitivity. However, for the vast majority of people, this is temporary. Only about 10% of people tend to have long-term sleep problems. And for people who do have persistent problems with sleep, there are lots of strategies that can help you get a better night's rest. Even where people are living with severe long-term pain, studies show that they can improve their sleep quality through addressing what they do around sleep, our behaviors, and how they think ways to minimise the impact of sleep problems on day-to-day -day life. All in all, this shows us that sleep is important for our health and well-being, but there's no normal sleep. What's normal for individuals varies over time and between people as well. What's also normal is that we'll all have times where sleeping's easier or more difficult, and the body's designed to handle and adapt to these ups and downs to a certain extent. At the same time, there's lots we can do to help our bodies have the best chance of a good night's sleep, and these will be covered in the next videos.